Hello class. Week 11, we continue our discussion on fractions. In particular, we will be doing addition and subtraction of fractions, as well as multiplication, where one number is a whole number and the other number is a non-whole number, so a fractional value. Beginning with adding and subtracting fractions. Recall that for numerical addition to produce consistent results, the two values must have the same referent which would yield a result with that same referent. If the two values don't have the same referent, then the operations can yield unanticipated results. The same is true for addition involving fractions. You might remember uh, the earlier example I gave where I did something like 1 plus 2, and I said that's 121, and people say, no, 1 plus 2 is 3. Well, it's only 3 if, you're, if the 1 and 2 are referring to the same thing. But what I was thinking was... Um, one minute plus two hours equals 121 minutes. So you can, depending on what units you put on these numbers, you can get really uh, unexpected results. So here's some more examples to think about. You have three apples and five apples, right? This is, there's three dots for standing for three apples, and that's being combined with five apples. And we know that this will give us a total of eight apples. So we say that three plus five is eight, and all of these reference on the 3, the 5, and the 8 are all apples. They're all the same. 3 4s plus 5 4s. Well, that just makes 8 4s. All the units are the same. Or you could look at this uh, more mathematically, right? 3 4s plus 5 4s equals 8 4s. And 8 4s, when you put them all together, gives you 32. 3 4s is 12 of something. 5 4s is 20 of something, assuming they're the same things, right? That gives us the 32 of that thing. But 3 4s and 5 4s just make 8 4s. 3 halves plus 5 halves make 8 halves. What this looks like is uh, 3 halves, 3 times 1 half, plus 5 halves equals 8 halves. And this uh, could be written this way as well. So this fraction plus this fraction, th 3 over 2 plus 5 over 2. So 3 halves plus 5 halves equals 8 halves. And when you put 8 halves together, that winds up giving you 4 holes. So uh, 4, whatever the units are here. We're assuming that all these are referring to 3 halves of something. 5 halves of the same thing equals 8 halves of that thing. Uh, same for 3 sevenths, right? You have 3 sevenths. Let me just go ahead and write this as 3 over 7. So 3 sevenths plus 5 sevenths. That just gives you a total of 8 sevenths. All right, or you can write it this way, 8 sevenths. Uh, mind you, over here, how do I know that I'm to make fractions out of these words? When, uh, when you see numbers like 3 1s, 3 2s, 3 3s, 3 4s, we're referring to whole numbers there. But when you put the th at the end, uh, such as tooths, but tooths are just called halves, threeths, threeths are just called thirds, fourths, which could be called fourths or quarters, and then after that, they're all the same. You just put th at the end, essentially. So you have fifths, sixths, sevenths. So when that th is at the end, we're talking about uh, fractional values. So 1 seventh is 1 over 7. It's an amount that when copied 7 times makes a whole unit, is what 1 seventh stands for. Anyway, so 8 sevenths. Uh, then if you want, you could turn this 8 sevenths into a mixed number. <clears throat> it winds up being a 1 and 1 seventh. We talked about creating mixed numbers in the last unit. All right, now we have addition where the units don't match. Three quarts and five cups. I don't know if you know your uh, conversions between cups and quarts, but there are four cups of volume in one quart. So right now we're trying to add two differently sized amounts. If you wanted to say that three plus five is eight, in this context, what unit would you put here? Eight what? I contend that there probably isn't a good unit to put there. Unless you think of these as more abstract as three things plus five different things equals eight total things, and we're not thinking about volume any longer, but we're just counting things. I suppose you could abstract it that way and say that you have eight something here. 
But if we're focused on volume, then we're going to want to uh, do some sort of conversion in order to add these. So 8 what? Well, the answer we're going to get is not going to be 8, depending on which conversion we do. Uh, it's The best thing to do here, in my opinion, is convert quarts to cups. If one quart is 4 cups, then 3 quarts is the same thing as 12 cups. And I'll just put C for cup. And once you do this kind of conversion, that 3 quarts is the same thing as five or 12 cups, then you can add 12 cups and 5 cups and get 17 cups. And then you can divide 17 by 4 and convert this to uh, back to quarts, if you will. It's going to be 4 and 1 fourth quarts, if you wanted to give an answer in quarts. So depending on how you did a conversion, you'd get different answers depending on which conversion you went. You could even convert all of these things to fluid ounces. And then, or teaspoons, or some other unit, gallons, or some other unit of measure, and then add them. But the key idea is that whatever unit you have, if they match when you're doing addition, then you can just add the numerals in the expected way and just keep that unit. All right, so we, we get that same thing uh, with adding different fractional pieces. Three halves plus five sixths. Now, when you think of a unit whole, right, And you cut them in halves. So three halves. Oops, that's a little bit too thick. There you go. So here's three halves. And we're going to add that to five sixths. Well, a sixth is when you take the unit whole and you break it into six equal parts. I'll try to do that. Looks okay. And we have five of those sixths. So all but one of them. So this is what we're trying to combine, but since they don't refer to the same unit, what would you say you have 8 of? I mean, if you say 3 plus 5 is always 8, well, not in this case. 3 halves plus 5 six is equal to what? Don't want to say 8 here. I'll just put a question mark, and we'll talk about how to do this in a moment. But it, Well, let's talk about it right now. The key is going to be to convert all of these things into sixths, because a sixth is a smaller piece than a half, and it's easy to turn a half into a sixth. If you were to uh, continue with these two circles here and broke them up into sixths, you could see that three halves is the same thing as just count these out, right? One, two, three, four, five. There's there's uh, six sixths right there, and then seven, eight, nine. So we have a total of nine sixths. Let me move this imagery up here, actually. Oops, I didn't want to erase the shading. And <clears throat> so operationally, this looks like 3 halves plus 5 6 equals what? But if we think of 3 halves in terms of 6, then we can say that 3 halves is the same thing as 9 sixths. And now we can combine these into and get a 14 sixths, which you could <clears throat> express uh, differently as an equivalent fraction as 7 thirds. And if you wanted to write this as a mixed number, you could wind up getting that this is 2 and 1 third. Uh, pretty much boils down to if you take, let me shade these differently. If you take, so there's one shading and here's a different shading. If you were to take uh, these, I think I can, hopefully I can select this without selecting all of it. I'm not sure I can do this on this zoom level. Uh, I think the only way is to grab all of that, but... Anyway, you, let me color it differently. If you were to take these uh, three right here and move them over to this spot, okay, so those are now gone, but we had five, six, so these, oops, so these two pieces are still here, and you can see that when you combine these together, you do have uh, two holes, and then you have two sixths, or really is the same thing as just one third, uh, one third of that next hole. So it's two and a third.
Anyway, the whole point of this was to show that when the units are the same, you add in a normal sense. 3 plus 5 is 8. But when the units are not the same, which happened uh, with these last two examples here, some sort of conversion is required. So this is what's being said here. Uh, like with combining quarts and cups, combining differently sized pieces require one or more conversions of reference. And these are referring to uh, different fractional size pieces. Uh, one or more conversions of reference so that the two values have the same referent. Okay, so we're going to do this a little bit more in depth with uh, the next examples here. We're going to use fraction circles and or fraction bars to model the following operations. I'll do fraction circles to begin with, but uh, typically I prefer fraction bars over fraction circles. There are a few reasons why I like that. It's easier to reunitize. Uh, for example, if you have... We're so used to thinking that a whole circle represents one whole, but what if you wanted, you know, three quarters of the circle to represent one whole? And then that, for a lot of people, is cognitively challenging to make that leap. They insist that a, a whole is an entire circle, but you, you don't quite have that same issue when you're working with fraction bars. But let's do a fraction circles for this two-fifths gallons plus seven-fifths gallons. And I'm going to use the uh, virtual manipulative here. We had 7 fifths gallons. Okay, so I'm going to need it. I'm going to put several drop zones in here. Here we go. Uh, let's see, which one of these was a fifth? Let me just start throwing these in here and see if this is going to be a fifth. And it looks like this is going to be a sixth, right? Because six of the turquoises go into there. So let's start over. Uh, the fifth is going to have to be a little bit larger. Let's see if this one is a fifth. If three of these pieces, or five of these pieces make the hole, and they do. Okay, so the green is one-fifth. Each green wedge is one-fifth of a hole. And we have a total of two-fifths gallons. So let's put two in there. And we're going to add that to seven-fifths. I'm going to put uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is what we're combining together. And since we're... The uh, wedges that we're working with are all green wedges. They're all the same. They're all the same size. We can just count how many green wedges we have. So if I had two, and then I had now have seven, combine them, I have a total of nine. All right, so I could take these and just throw them over to this circle over here and say, okay, here's my final answer when I combine these. I have a total of nine-fifths, which is the same thing as one and four-fifths. But when your denominators are, are the same number, 5 and 5, that's referring to the size of the piece, a one-fifth piece. And if you have two of them and you add them to seven of them, you're going to get a total of nine-fifths gallons, which in mixed number corresponds to one and four-fifths gallons. Remember that when I say a mixed number and I say one and four-fifths, that's how I say this. I typically don't write the word and in there. But it really means you're you're adding these, right? You have one gallon plus four fifths gallons is your new amount. It's just important to know that when you're using this notation for a mixed number, the operation between the whole number and the fraction is addition. Uh, let me move these answers actually, make them a little bit smaller, put it right there. Because I didn't give myself space to, to draw a picture. which, um, let me do fraction bars. I use fraction circles, but I'm going to do fraction bars to do two-fifths. So let's say that this is a gallon. Let me make that a, a rectangle that looks, there we go. Let me paste several of them around here and say, okay, so these are all, all these bars represent one gallon. Then I'm going to split them into five pieces. And you have to be, you do your best to make your pieces all look the same. If they look horribly different, then maybe erase it and try it again and until you feel like they're close enough to being the same. And that's probably good enough. In fact, let me zoom in here and copy those so I can just paste them here and not have to redo it. Now, when you put a 
a bar right beside another bar and it's easy to lose track of what the hole was. So remember, I like this trick of putting that extra line right there to separate the two. So we have uh, two fifths and we're adding that to seven fifths. Oops, let me make that shade and go all the way over. There we go, it looks a little bit better. Okay. And maybe I could do uh, actually different different colors. Oops, wrong thing here. All right, there's the two fifths. And we're gonna add that to the seven fifths. I'm just gonna move those two fifths right here. And say, in fact, let me just go ahead and just get rid of that representation. And we can see that we've combined seven fifths. Remember, addition is commutative, so I can combine them in either order. Uh, seven fifths and two fifths together combine to make a total of nine fifths, which is one whole and an extra four fifths. All right, the next example, we have five pies plus four thirds pies. Okay, so I'm going to draw, I like the rectangle I had over here. Let me see if I can copy that. If I just grab the corner and copy, it should paste. Okay, so there's, this stands for uh, one pie. Let me actually shrink this down because we have five of them and I don't want them to be too big. Let's say that's a pie. And we want a total of five of them. Okay, and to this, we're going to add four thirds pies. And uh, for shading purposes, I'm not going to do any shading this time, actually. But I will do this notion of using this extra vertical bar to indicate where the 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 whole rectangles are split. Make that a little bit longer. So there's five whole pies, and we need to do four thirds pies. Well, four thirds pies means do a third of a pie. So I'm going to break that pie right there. This is one pie right here. Break that into three pieces, but then do four of those pieces. Well, three of them uh, constitute one whole, so we need an extra one third right there. So I will shade the... Here's the four thirds. And all we're simply going to do now is tack that on to the end here. Okay, so let me be, I changed my mind. I will do some color coding here. So there's the five. And we added to that four thirds. Okay, so up to there is five pies. And right here represents the four thirds pies. Okay, so I can't just go adding four and five and say I've got nine something because they're not referring to the same whole, right? An entire, one entire uh, red unit here is not the same size as one green unit. But if I express the red, each of these holes in terms of thirds, I just gotta figure out how many thirds there are that make up five pies. So you could convert five into, well, each unit is broken up into three equal parts, so there's gonna be a total of 15 parts, so it's 15 thirds. If you were to count them out, right? One, two, three, et cetera, you have 15 thirds here. So I can add 15 thirds and four thirds. Oops, wrong marker. So we have 15 thirds pies, I'll just leave pies off till the end, plus 4 thirds pies, that gives me 19 thirds pies. Of course, from this you can see that another acceptable answer will be one whole pie, two, three, four, five, six whole pies with an extra third. So you could convert this to a, a mixed number as well and say that this is the same thing as saying that you have six and one third pies.
Okay, let's do uh, adding two fractions where the denominators are, are different. You'll notice we did appear two fractions where the denominators were the same, so you're adding similarly sized pieces. Here we did adding a whole number with a fractional piece. Now let's do two fractions that have different denominators. 7 fourths plus 3 halves hours. I'm going to go back to the circles and model this. Uh, fourths was the yellow. Oops, let me actually drop up here. So 7 fourths is 1, 2, 3, 4 fourths makes a whole. 5, 6, oops, I want to drop over here now. 5, 6, 7. So there's 7 fourths. And we're going to add 2 7 fourths, 3 halves. The half is the pink, so let me drop 1, 2, and 3 halves. So the question is going to be how do I add these together? But if you were to break the pink into, into halves, right, so just I'm going to put halves over the pink instead. Oops, let's go back there. And do everything in terms of fourths, then you can see that we have seven fourths above and six fourths below. And when you add those together, that gives you a total of uh, 13 fourths, which when you recombine this way, move that there. Let's get rid of that pink. Then you can see that that winds up really just being the same thing as three holes and an extra quarter. So three and one quarter. And this is referring to hours in this case, so three and a quarter hours. And it's going to be our answer. Uh, the fraction circles are really nice, that manipulative to work with. I, I'm going to do this again, though, with fraction bars. So let's get a bar in here. I'll make this bar a little bit uh, longer again. Okay, so I'm going to do the 7 fourths first. So I've got to split the each hour up like that and then go into fourths. So halves and then halves is a good way to do fourths, half and then half. And we have 7 of them. And to this, we're going to add uh, three halves. Let me actually just copy this, paste it, and delete some things in here. Okay, so now we're working with halves. So there's a half and a half, and there's another half and a half, and we have three halves. All right. So 7 fourths plus 3 halves. Again, the key is to break everything up into quarters. So I'm going to break these up additionally into quarters. And so that you can see that we're really just adding uh, a total of... Let me move this, or let's go like this. So we have 7 fourths, and we're adding to that three halves, but we wrote, we expressed three halves instead of as six quarters. And then when I add these together, we get 13 quarters as an answer. And four goes into 13, uh, well, three times four, you know, group them in groups of uh, four, you get three holes and one quarter. And the way to do that with, with these visuals is to uh, Put these images together and then rearrange some of the pieces. Like so, I would take these images, put them together, separate where the the, the hole is, right? That separates each hole from the next, and then take just one of these uh, quarters here at the end, and so that one, oops, this one I I want to leave the, this one here, but the other one I unshaded so I can shade it over here so that they're now the red and the green are back to back with no gaps in between and so now you can see that we have a representation of an answer that tells us three and a quarter should be the answer okay uh five six yards let me Move, shrink this down slightly and kind of get it out of the way. Put that over here. Okay. So five six yards plus 
three quarter yards. If you'll notice back over in this example over here, it was easy, when you look at the two denominators, four versus two, two is a factor of four, right? So it's easy to multiply two to turn it into four. And so what you do with the equivalent of fraction approach effectively is multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by two. And that's how you can write it as six fourths. And so only one fraction had to be um, converted in terms of different size pieces, six fourths as opposed to three halves. And uh, once that conversion was done, we were able to have similar units. Now over here, look at these denominators. They are not the same, nor is one a multiple of the other, an integer multiple of the other. Perhaps if I double four, I get eight, and that's already too big. And So what you can do is find a the least common multiple of the two denominators, which is going to be called the least common denominator, LCD. So LCM is least common multiple, but LCD is least common denominator. It's just finding a least common multiple, but in the context of uh, denominators. So I want to do the uh, quick approach of finding the LCM, the least common multiple of 6 and 4, the two denominators. All right, well, 6 factors to 2 and 3, 4 factors to 2 and 2. Uh, what do they have in common? Well, they have uh, two in common already, so you just need one of those, and then you need the, the three and the extra two. In the end, you're going to get a 12 here. Right? The other way to do this, of course, would just to be do multiples of four and six. Right? So four, eight, 12, etc. Do multiples of six, and right away we see that 12 is the smallest common multiple. So the least, the LCM of these two denominators is 12. So I want to express five, six in terms of twelfths. So the way to do this algebraically is to write 5 6 and then you multiply the top and bottom you double the top and bottom and then we want to convert 3 fourths to twelfths so I'm going to multiply 3 times the top and bottom remember you have to do the top and bottom by the same number for each fraction now if you choose twos here you don't need to choose twos here but once you choose uh, once you choose that this is a 2, then that has to be a 2. And once you choose that that's a 3, then that has to be a 3. So this gives us 10 uh, twelfths uh, plus 9 twelfths. And now that we have twelfths and twelfths, we can get a total of 19 twelfths yards. Which is the same thing as 1 and 7 twelfths. Uh, for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and not do the, the imagery. I'm not going to draw a picture of this one here, but I will do the fraction circles. This, So 5, 6. Which one was the 6? It was the teal, right? So we have 5, 6, and we're going to add that to a total of uh, 3 quarters. 3 quarters was, so here's the 3 quarters. And our goal is to find out a... A common denominator, the least common denominator is the LCM. It's going to be a 12. We want to do 12s for all of these. Now, which of these is the 12? So let me experiment over here in this circle. Is it the gray or the purple or the blue? Let's do the gray. Four, five, six. So there's six of them. That's already half. Yeah, so another six will give us all of it. So the, the grays are the 12s. Um, let me just start over. One, two, three, four, five. 4, 5, and this one we had 3 fourths. 1, 2, 3. So here's our 5, 6 plus 3 fourths. We're going to do everything in terms of twelfths. So 1, let me move that there. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's our 10 twelfths. That's the same thing as 5 sixths. And down here we need to do 9 twelfths. Let's put that up here. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9. And now we just have to say, okay, well, if I have uh, uh, 10 twelfths plus 9 twelfths, I could just take uh, some of these twelfths and put them up here. Let's get rid of this quarter. And you can see that the end result is 1 and, and then 7 twelfths down below the partial circle. 1 and 7 twelfths. 
And here we have adding two mixed numbers. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. We have 1 and 2 thirds, and we're going to add that to, to 4 and 5 sixths. Well, these ands already imply addition. And so this really just means 1 plus 2 thirds plus 4 plus 5 sixths. You should probably put these in parentheses at least initially, but because addition is commutative and associative, you really don't need any of these parentheses. You can add these in any order you want. So some people will add the whole numbers together first, then add the uh, fractional parts next, the proper fractions. So you get 5 plus, and then here we need a common denominator. I'm going to multiply this fraction by 2, the top and bottom of it by 2. Don't say you multiply the fraction by 2. That's different. You have to multiply the numerator and the denominator both by 2. That's Say that. That's clear. So we get 4 6, and then we're adding that to 5 6. And that's the same thing as uh, 9 6. So we have 5 and 9 6, but 9 6 is not a proper fraction. You can also uh, simplify that down to, let's bring this work up here. Uh, you can divide the top and bottom each by 3. So that's really just the same thing as just saying 3 halves. And but 3 halves is 1 and a half. So you could break that apart as 1 and a half and then combine the two whole parts. And so we get 6 and a half as a final answer here. And this is ounces. And OZ is an abbreviation for ounces. All right, that's, that's one approach to doing this. And I'm going to leave off the picture of uh, showing a representation. What if I, another approach is to combine this into a single fraction, write it as an improper fraction, and then do the same thing uh, here, write this as an improper fraction. So 1 and 2 thirds. Well, 1 is 3 thirds. When you add 3 thirds and 2 thirds, you get 5 thirds. And then the 4, in terms of sixths, is 24 sixths. If you do 24 sixths, you'll get 4 holes. So converting the mixed numbers into improper fractions, we really are just trying to add 5 thirds ounces to 29 sixths ounces. But now to add these together, they don't have the same referent. One's a, well, they both refer to ounces, but they refer to, diff this is 5 1 third ounces, and this is 29 1 sixth ounces. So the 1 third of an ounce and the 1 sixth of an ounce aren't the same size. So to make these the same size, get a common denominator of 6, multiply uh, the top and bottom by 2 of the first fraction, getting 10 6, right, plus 29 6, and that gives us a total of 39 6. And when you do every group of 6, all right, 6 6 makes a hole, and so 6 goes into 39 6 times, so you have 6 holes, and then 3 are left over, so 3 and 3 6, and that's the same thing as, uh, sorry, 6 and 3 6 is the same thing as 6 and 1 half. So you wind up getting the same answer. Let me put a unit on here, ounces. All right, so the idea to adding fractions um, or whole numbers with fractions is to obtain common denominator. So you're referring to the same size piece, and then just count how many of those pieces there are, and that's how you can get your answers. And then, of course, you have the flexibility of expressing answers as single fractions that are improper, or as mixed numbers when appropriate. And I did not put a unit here, so let me put hours right there, hours. All right, subtraction is, is pretty much the same. <clears throat> uh, what, what's true about the reference and addition is also true about the reference and subtraction. They gotta be the same if you wanna subtract. And then the difference, the answer you get, is going to be the same unit. So if you have seven apples and you take away five apples, and you can do the takeaway thinking or the comparison thinking, like, uh, for example, let's say you have seven apples and you eat five of them. Then you would take those away and you have two apples left. Or you can do the comparison thinking of subtraction. Like, I have seven apples, you have five apples, and I say, how many more apples do I have than you? And subtraction answers that question too. I have two more apples than you do. So there's either a takeaway imagery or just a comparison of two amounts imagery. Uh, seven fours minus five fours. That only leaves you with two fours. In other words, two times four. All right. So if you have seven fours and you take away five of those fours, you can see why you get two of those fours. Let's do this. And uh, two fours is is eight. Seven fours is twenty-eight. If you want to go this way, five fours is twenty. And so you can see we get the confirmation 
that 28 minus 20 is 8, and 7 fours minus 5 fours gives you only 2 fours. 7 halves minus 5 halves, right? So here's 7 halves, and you take away 5 halves. Well, that leaves you 2 halves left, but 2 halves makes 1. And here we're referring to something here. 7 halves of something, like of a pie. Same, same thing with the fours. When I say 7 fours, that's naked math. But you can think of the 4 as a unit if you want, but you should still be thinking about some concrete unit as well, like 7, uh, seven copies of 4 apples. So 7 4 apples. In other words, 28 apples. Uh, 7 sevenths minus 5 sevenths, right? We have 7 sevenths minus 5 sevenths, and we get 2 sevenths is the difference. Uh, again, referring to some some whole, two-sevenths of a pi or something. Uh, now we have subtraction where the units don't match, and we have the same issue we had with addition. we got to do a conversion. So we have seven quarts minus five cups. You don't want to say that you have two something. Well, two what? It's going to be appropriate to convert units here. So seven quarts, each quart is four cups, so it's really the same thing as 28 cups minus five cups, and that gives us 23 cups. All right, sorry. An answer in terms of cups is 23. If I did, did this in terms of quarts, every four cups is a quart, so there's five and three-quarter quarts. Right, if you were to actually do 23 cups, etc., right, each group of four makes a quart. So you just count the quarts. Right, so there's your five quarts total. I circled. Anyway, there's your five quarts, and then you have uh, three more cups still and that forms three quarters of a of a quart. So five and three quarters quarts, if you wanted to give an answer in quarts. But you can see, depending what unit you go with, your numerical answers are very different. But volume-wise, they're the same when you put the unit on it. 23 cups and five and three quarters quarts are the same volume, even though, even though the numerals are different. Seven halves minus five sixths, a similar issue. If I want, if I have seven halves, I don't want to take away five sixths. I want to think of halves in terms of sixths. So seven halves minus five sixths, uh, top and bottom by three. So we have twenty-one six minus five sixths. That gives us a total of sixteen sixths, which you could express instead as eight thirds. Which, if you want, you could write as a mixed number. That's going to be two and two thirds of something. I didn't specify what we were actually thinking about here. Just showing that halves and sixths don't combine. No matter what it is you're thinking about, as long as you're thinking about the same thing, though. So this had to be seven halves of something and five sixths of the same thing. Because you would get a, an even more bizarre answer if I said seven half dollars plus five sixths of a quarter. Right? Because a dollar and a quarter aren't the same amount, and you get an even a more different answer. Uh, okay, so nine. I'm not going to do a, a, a ton of pictures for these, uh, even though the instructions say to do that. They're saying use fraction circles or fraction bars to model the following operations. Um, I'll use the dynamic imagery and maybe draw one picture here where I see appropriate. You're going to notice that in all of these subtractions, I deliberately made the minuend be larger than the subtrahend so that we get positive amounts back. So in other words, we're either taking away a smaller portion from a larger portion, or we're saying how much larger is the larger number than the smaller number. That's a, either way to interpret, you have know, two ways to interpret all of these differences, but they're all going to guarantee a positive answer back. Uh, let's do the fraction bar for this one here, 9 fifths gallons. So I'm going to have to draw a bar that represents one gallon. And we have nine fifths, so I'm going to have to break this into fifths and then do nine of them. And I already don't, you can see why this is, sometimes can be tedious just to make it look right. We'll say that's good enough. And so focusing on, here's one fifth right there, but I need nine fifths. So there's five of them, I need four more. So I'm going to copy paste. I'm going to separate the two gallons with an extra bar like that. Okay, this looks good to me. And we have uh, nine-fifths. There we go, so it's not quite two. It's one-fifth shy of being two. And we want to take away two-fifths. So we're going to say, and 
two fifths right here. I'm going to say take away two fifths. This is with the take away model. So the end result is seven fifths. All right, keeping in mind that we started with nine fifths. Let me move this down a little bit. All right, so we have nine fifths gallons there. I took away two fifths, and I'm left with seven fifths gallons. This is the takeaway model. <clears throat> if I were to do the comparison model, then maybe you would want to draw uh, something like this. Let me draw this one, copy that. Draw these things twice. Let me put two fifths as, a, as its own value. And not do any takeaway necessarily, just say, okay, let's compare these. 9 fifths is how many more than 2 fifths? All right, so that, that you would be, to answer that question, you would simply say, all right, start with a smaller amount and then say what has to be added to it to make the larger amount. All right, so when you, when you compare these, you're looking at uh, the comparison value is 7 fifths what ne is what needs to be added right, to 2 fifths in order to yield this nine-fifths. So in one of them, you're actively imagining something being taken away. In the other one, you're just comparing two things, saying how much larger is one than the other. Uh, let me... I kind of crowded my space here a little bit. I'm going to shrink this down a bunch so I can fit both of these in here. And then let's say that uh, in one case, we are doing... The, uh, this is the takeaway approach, takeaway model of subtraction. And this one here was the comparison. Either approach gives you 7 fifths gallons, which if you want, you could convert to uh, 1 and 2 fifths, which is easy to see if you look at this picture, right? 7 fifths gallons is the same thing as 1 and 2 fifths gallons. I'll just put G for gallons. Or I think I should do G A L. Okay. All right. So eleven thirds pies remove two pies. <clears throat> well, this would be easy using this this manipulative. Eleven thirds. So the third was the orange. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. I think I did that right. There's eleven thirds right there. And we want to take away 2. So this is going to be easy just to uh, take away these, these two here, just remove them, if you will, and say what's left. Well, 1 and 2 thirds is left. So this visual gives us an easy answer of 1 and 2 thirds. Uh, I'm not going to do this with fraction bars uh, as well. I'm just going to do the get a common denominator approach. 11 thirds minus 2. Well, 2 is the same thing as, you can think of it as two, 2 ones, and if you triple each, the two, numerator and denominator, it's the same thing as 6 thirds, right? All right, that was the, the 6 thirds up here that I had removed, All right? There's, there's the 2 that I then removed 6 thirds instead of just removing 2. And uh, that gives us a total of five thirds left. So we have five thirds pies left, and that's the same thing as one and two thirds pies. Uh, you might start wondering right now. You'll notice I'm doing a lot of mixed numbers and improper fractions. At at some point, it's good to know that these are the same values. And I think early in education, you want children to be able to express answers in both ways. But as you, the further someone goes in math, you start really working more with improper fractions as the acceptable answer. But maybe early in grade school, we start insisting that they convert their answers to mixed numbers. It's, it's good to have those skill sets, but in the end, uh, these are the same amount. And so mathematically, it, if someone gives this answer, someone gives that answer, they've both given the correct answers. You know, It's not that big of a deal which answer you give, unless the purpose is to show that you understand how to convert between the two ways of expressing that same value. 
nine quarter hours minus three halves hours. Okay, I'm going to do no visual on this for time's sake. We have nine quarters, and we're going to subtract from that three halves. I'm going to convert three halves to quarters by doubling the top and bottom. So only one fraction had to be converted, if you will. So we have nine quarters minus six quarters, and that gives us three quarters of an hour. And that's a proper fraction, so there's no need to convert that to a mixed number. Uh, 11 sixths yards minus 3 quarters yards. Okay, uh, Neither one of these denominators is a multiple of the other. That was not the case over here with 4 and 2. So I'm going to have to find an LCM again, a least common multiple of 4 and 6. And then adjust both fractions accordingly. And that least common multiple is 12. So I'm going to have to triple the numerator and denominator of that second fraction, but double the numerator and denominator of that first fraction, and that's going to give me 22 twelfths, and we're going to remove from that 9 twelfths, and then now that we have common size pieces, I can take 9 twelfths away from 22 twelfths, and that gives me a total of 13 twelfths, which is 1 and 1 twelfth. And the unit here is yards. So. Remember, if I, if I say... Uh, if a number is le less than one, I usually put a unit that's singular on it, and if it's more than one, then I usually put a plural unit on it. Just something to think about. Gallons, technically, g gals, but just something to, to be mindful of. And now let's do a mixed number subtraction. We have five and a fifth, and we're going to take away three and two thirds. So if you were to convert these ands into plus signs, 5 and 1 fifth looks like 5 plus a fifth. And we're going to remove, and then we're going to remove this whole amount here. So we've got to put this in parentheses. We want to remove 3 and 2 thirds. So there are multiple ways you can do this kind of subtraction problem. One is to do the distributive property of subtraction. Remove the 3 and remove the 2 thirds as separate steps. Because to, re to remove a whole a sum, you remove the, the pieces separately. And so this, and the first set of parentheses are not needed to be written, so you could write it this way. Remove 3, and then remove 2 thirds. And we're going to do this in such a way that we avoid having negative numbers at any step along the way. If I look at 1 fifth and take away 2 thirds, well, we have to get a common denominator of 15. So that's really 3 fifteenths, and we're trying to take away, and then here, multiply by 5 and 5, 10 fifteenths. And if we want to avoid negative numbers, then I'm going to want to borrow from my whole numbers over here. So let's leave let's leave that like this. Let's do the, the 5 minus the 3, that's 2. So we have 2 plus and then these fractions. Remember, you could think of subtraction as addition with a negative, addition with a negative, and now that everything is addition, you can just move all these pieces around. Right, so I could do 5 plus negative 3 first, and then do 1 fifth plus negative 2 thirds second. Um, that you're allowed to do, but I'm going to leave those in terms of subtraction. It was 5 and a fifth minus 3, and then minus 2 thirds. I'm going to remove the 3 from the 5, right? The 5, remove the 3, gives you the 2. But I'm going to break apart this 2 and as a 1 plus 1. I'm going to decompose it, because the 1 and the 3 fifteenths I want to add together to make, we have 15 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths. So that's going to give me a total of uh, 1 and 18 fifteenths. And we have this minus 10 fifteenths that we still have to do, minus 10 fifteenths. But now I'm in a position where I can do uh, 18 fifteenths minus 10 fifteenths without producing any negatives. And we get a total of 1 and Let's bring my work up here. We get 1 and uh, 8 fifteenths. And 8 and fifteenths have no common factors. They're relatively prime. Therefore, that fraction will not uh, reduce to more simple numbers. Of course, as a mixed number, it would look like this. 1 and 8 fifteenths. I'll notice that I didn't put any units here. That's a, an oversight. So I typically don't like to do anything unless we are specifying the units. Um, let's just put the word unit here. And so we're just referring to something, but they're the same thing, so that this would be that same thing, whatever it is. 
Okay, and a uh, second way you might do this is to actually convert these into improper fractions before you do the subtraction, which I think you're going to see uh, could be argued to be a little bit easier. So we have, let me copy this first line right here, bring that over as a second approach. So 5 is the same thing as 15 fifths. No, that's not true at all. It's 25 fifths. 15 fifths would be 3. So we have this mixed number, 25 fifths plus 1 fifth minus, and then 3 is the same thing as 9 thirds. And we're going to add that to 2 thirds. And so we get 26 fifths minus 11 thirds. And no more parentheses are needed. Now I just need to get a common denominator. Again, for this time, it's going to be uh, 15 is, will be our common denominator. Do everything in terms of 15ths. And we have 3 26 3 times 26 is a total of 78. So we have 78 15ths. We're going to remove from that 55 15ths. And when you remove 55 from 78, you get 23. So 23 fifteenths is our is an answer, units, whatever that unit was. Or if you want to, write, want to write this as a mixed number, well, 15 of these 23 fifteenths make 1, and that leaves uh, 8 left over. So in mixed number, you can see we get the same uh, answer we got over here. So when you compare these two different ways of doing this, I, I, I believe this one here is cleaner. This one here involved you to remember that you had to do the distributive property of subtraction, then you combine the whole numbers, but then you realize that to avoid a negative fraction right here, you had to borrow, so you had to decompose that 2 into 1 plus 1 and combine these so that I had a fraction here that was more than this one, so that when I subtracted, I didn't get a, a negative. So there, there's definitely several uh, places where a student might trip up in this approach, although it's a perfectly valid approach. Uh, for efficiency's sake, I think I like this idea better. Just make the mixed numbers into improper fractions, then get a common denominator, and then just, just subtract. Okay, next let's talk about multiplication with whole multipliers and non-whole multiplicants. Remember that uh, in a multiplication statement, we have the form multiplier times multiplicand equals product, where the multiplier is the number of copies that are to be combined, the multiplicand is the amount of something per copy, and the product is the resulting amount. Uh, each express each scenario below as a missing product multiplication task with the first factor as the multiplier and answer the question using a drawing to represent your reasoning. Okay, you need to make six batches of a recipe that calls for two-thirds of a cup of milk. How much milk do you need? Okay, so uh, it's you can put batches here as a unit or I'm going to use recipes. I'm going to keep we want to do six recipes and we know that each recipe calls for two-thirds of a, a cup of milk. I'll just put C for cup of milk per recipe, R-E-C. Notice that whenever you do create a multiplicative structure like this, it's the multiplicand that should have a, a something per something unit. And the, the unit down here, which is recipes, should match the unit of the multiplier. You want this unit and this unit to match, and our final answer is going to be in terms of this unit. So we're doing six recipes and two thirds of a cup per recipe, and the question is how many you know how many cups do we need total for this? So the six is the multiplier; it's a whole number, but the multiplicand is a fraction. And uh, when you have a whole number multiplier, it's really just making uh, equally sized copies. So we have two thirds that we want to copy six times, essentially. I'm going to do this using a fraction bar. And I'm going to do an unknown length fraction bar, but cut it into holes. And these I'll try to make the same. One way I could make this look the same is to create create a little measuring device for me to use. Now let's do this. 
create a little measuring device. And in this software, let me make that a different color. Oops. I'm just showing you different strategies you might do to make everything look the right size. And then, so there's one cup right there. I'm gonna move my measuring device over to here. Right. There's a second cup. Move my measuring device. Right, a third cup. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, you, there are we do have tools at our disposal these days of now I don't know how many cups I'm I'm trying to make here. I'm just drawing a bunch of them. Notice it's not gonna wind up being clean, but watch what I can do. Because we have this little chunk left. Let's just do one more. So let me put that measuring bar right there, and then I'm going to change the length of this rectangle so it matches. Okay, so now it looks like I've created a rectangle that's been broken up into six equal pieces. Maybe I need more, maybe I need less. I don't really know yet. But each recipe requires two-thirds of a cup. Now, each of these is one cup, so it's important to identify a whole. And also notice I made my lines extend above to help me keep each cup separate from the next cup. But now I'm going to break a cup into thirds. I'll use a different color and just sort of eyeball this. So there's your thirds. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, start doing six copies of two thirds. So here's two thirds of a cup. This is for the first recipe. And then I'm going to right, keep pasting these things in here. And you can already tell that things aren't super precise as I was hoping they would be. But I think you get the idea of what's, what's happening here. That's good enough. We are trying to figure out, we're just doing six copies of two-thirds. So I'm going to number my copies just to keep track of them. So there's two-thirds, there's another two-thirds, there's another two-thirds, another, and I want to keep this up until I have six of them. Well, there's five, so it looks like I just need to do one more. So in the end, notice I have a total of 12 thirds, which winds up shading exactly four entire cups. All right, so this whole thing, we have a total of 12 thirds, which is the same thing as four cups. Four cups needed. Now another way you could, you could do this is we're really trying to do six times two thirds. But two-thirds already could be thought of as two copies of one-third. So if you break apart two-thirds as two one-thirds, and then we want six of these, you just have to do six uh, times two, and that gives you the total amount of thirds that you actually have. It's like the same thing as saying if you want to do six copies of two apples, right? notice the unit will stay the same. You just have to do, okay, that makes 12 apples. Well, you can think of, if you will, this, uh, I want the eraser, there we go. You can think of this one third as kind of like a unit. It's kind of like saying, just putting a word there instead. If we have two thirds and we want to do six copies of that, that's going to give you a total of 12 thirds. You just have to multiply the six and the two. This generalizes uh, the following that if you have a whole number times a fractional amount, you just have to really multiply the two numbers of pieces, right? If you're six copies of two pieces, it gives you 12 pieces. And what's the unit on those pieces? This is still in thirds. So that gives us a total of four. Uh, the next one, you ran eight fifths miles each day for six days. Find how many miles you ran, I should say, or did you run in, how many miles did you run in total? Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so six days, and this is miles per day, each day. So when you see that unit of miles per day, that tells you the eight-fifths is the multiplicand. It's miles per day. That's the amount you have per copy, and a copy is a day. You're going to multiply this by six days. So notice, again, that this unit of the multiplier matches this denominator unit of our uh, multiplicand, and our final answer is going to be in terms of miles. This is what we're after. So six copies of eight-fifths miles. Our instructions here are to draw a picture. I'm going to do uh, a picture of... I'm going to do circles. I'm going to convert eight-fifths miles into one and three-fifths using circles. Well, let me do this. Do my best to break this into five equal pieces. This can be tricky. Three, four. That looks horrible. This is a challenging thing to do sometimes. Make it look like five equal pieces. Uh, what needs to be tweaked? Maybe that one. Circles are not easier to cut up in, than bars sometimes, but that's good enough. So I'm going to copy this paste, and let's do some shading. So we have one, two, three, four, five fifths, and we need three more to make eight fifths. And there's the other three. So this stands for the eight fifths miles. But then we gonna do this per day, and we wanna do this uh, for each day. So I need to do six copies of this. There's one copy, two copies, three copies, Uh, I need to do two more, and then I'm going to highlight the copies, right, each day. Okay, so we have day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and day six. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and day six. And the question is, when you push this, all this together, what do you have? Well, in, there's six copies of, of eight green wedges, if you will, so that makes really 48 green wedges with 6 times 8. So we know we're going to have a total of 48 green wedges, and each wedge is 1 fifth, so we have 48 fifths, and this will be in miles. And if you want to make this a mixed number, you know that you could also have broken this down into a, a uh, mixed number and, you know, done six, 6 holes, you know, add up all the holes first, so we have 6 uh, miles right there, and then take all the fractional pieces and try to add those together, all the, the partial pieces, I should say, and add those together and see how many you get in the end. And if you do a lot of relocating of, of wedges here, the question is, right, I, I could take start taking uh, some of the wedges from this piece here, the green wedges, and start filling in the wedges that are all missing in, until we've, we've done this. This gets a little more challenging to draw. Maybe do some color coding and figure out uh, how you can do this. It could be as simple for me as copying and pasting and then reshading thing, some things. Okay, so we have the six copies. And let's uh, pull apart. I'm going to unshade those three right there. And in a different color... Right, there's two of those three, and then there's the third. And just so we can see what, where these are coming from, I'll do color coding. So those three that used to be right there, I've just relocated. Now I'm going to do something similar for these five. Let's make those ones uh, uh, red. Okay, so I'm going to take those five, take them away from here, and then distrib redistribute them over here. So I did five more fifths. Well, there's one right there, two and three, four and five. Okay, so that there's the five one shared, and it looks like uh, that's all I needed to do, just so I can see how many total we have. So we have uh, one, two hours, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and three-fifths. So this is the same thing as nine and three-fifths miles. Which is what you would get if you say how many copies of five go into 48 without exceeding it.
closest we get is 9, and then that has a remainder of 3. So 9 and 3 fifths miles. Okay, this next comment here is recall that one interpretation of A over B units, or A B units, is A copies of one bth of a unit. This gives the statement below. Now, I've actually used this already. I used it up here to justify, uh, let's see where I used it, right? Oh, I used it here, right? When I said, when I broke apart, I thought of two thirds as two copies of one third. And then I just multiply those. Anyway, you can always break apart any fraction you want. Let's say the fraction two thirds, and think of that as two times a unit fraction. It's two copies of one third. And that's what two times one third literally means, two copies of a third added together. And that makes an amount called two thirds. So in other words, all fractions, all common fractions, A over B, could be written instead as A times a unit fraction, one over B. And these are the same thing. A copies of one over B, and that's exactly how one way to think about uh, A over B is A copies of one Bth. Okay, multiplication with non-whole multipliers and whole multiplicands. Okay, so now we are going to venture into what happens if the multiplier is not whole. Now, when the multiplier is whole, when it is a natural number, for example, then you can obtain the product, by reading this, by adding the indicated number of copies of the multiplicand. This is known as the repeated addition model for multiplication. All right, so like 5 times 3 just means add 3 5 times. Do 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. But that way of thinking is limited. It only really pertains when the multiplier is a whole number. And so it's not a good way to introduce multiplication to students and say, hey, multiplication means repeated addition. Well, that's only true, like I said, when multipliers are whole numbers. When you have multipliers that are not whole numbers, then we need a different way of thinking that isn't necessarily repeated addition anymore. Like, what does it mean to say 2 thirds times 5? If you say, hey, add 5 to itself 2 thirds times, that's a confusing statement. So let's first talk about what it means to even have a whole number multiplier. And we're going to start with uh, unit fractions as the multipliers. So when you see this statement like this, a unit fraction times a. Do not do, uh, I'm still assuming that the first number is the multiplier and the second number is the multiplicand. So don't do commutative I ideas and say that this means a copies of 1 over b. That's going to turn out to be that numerically that's true. You can do that. But we want to have a way to think about this where we say 1 over b copies of a. Where we want the multiplier to be the fraction and still be able to make sense of this. The way we say this is one beth of a copy of a, or simply one beth of a. So the, that, those are the language you use when you see this expression. One beth of a. If that b was a two, you would say one half of a. If that b was a three, you would say one third. If that b was a four, you would say one fourth or one quarter of a. And then once it's five or higher, you just put the th, one fifth, one sixth, etc. So, and it, what it means is the following. When I say, hey, think about one, one beth of A, it means that it's the size of one share when the amount A is partitioned into B equal shares. In other words, one beth times A has exact same meaning as A divided by B with a partitive conceptualization, right? reading this line. Because when you think partitively, when you say A divided by B with partitive, you're saying B copies of what amount make A. Well, that's like the, saying, the same thing as if you were to take A and break it into B parts, what's the size of one share? Because B copies of that would make A. So partitive conceptualization, conceptualization that's, that's why it's called the sharing notion for division, because it's breaking A into B equal parts. It's like sharing A between B children, for example. And... When you see this multiplication, 1 over b times a, 1 bth of a, that has exa exact same meaning. You need to think of them the same. It's the same thing as a divided by b with a partitive conceptualization. All right, for these examples, we're going to invent a task, which means write a word problem. I realize that when I say this in the homework problems, when I say invent a task, some of you don't realize that means write a word problem. But invent a task means write a word problem. Give a context and ask a question that is solved by each operation below. Then solve the task and draw a picture of fraction bars to represent your reasoning. Okay, so 1 third of 12. 
This is equivalent to saying that we want to do 12 divided by 3 partitively. So that means you have three copies of what make 12. So if you had a total of 12, right, if this meant 12, you'd want to break it into three parts and say that this right here would be the amount that's in 12 divided by 3. Because however much is here, when you copy it three times, you get 12. Right? So you're saying three copies of what make 12. Or in other words, break 12 into three equal groups. And we have a partitive division. So this, knowing ahead that this really just means that we're going to be doing 12 divided by 3, and I'll put P-A-R-T with a partitive meaning, uh, this helps me identify what kind of a question I might ask. So you want 12 of something, you want to break it into three groups. So, you know, candies and kids is an obvious thing that kids are familiar with, or, you know, or cupcakes and kids, or something like that. But it could also be something like uh, you run, or you earn $12 in three hours, and so you break $12 into three groups, and that tells you how much you earned each hour. You know, there's a variety of things that uh, you could use here. Let's do the money one. Let's say uh, you earned $12 in three hours. And the question will be, uh, what did you earn per hour? So I'll just write, I'm not going to use a complete sentence here for time's sake, but you should use complete sentences when you do your homework and stuff. So uh, how much per hour? is what we're asking. This is a missing multiplicand task, right? Because the structure is three hours times an unknown dollar amount per hour will give us the $12, right? It's the multiplicand we don't know. That's what makes this part of division. And it's just effectively saying, hey, break $12 into three equal groups. How, much, how many dollars are in each group, right? And uh, uh, visually though, we could do like take a, a fraction bar that stands for 12. So we'll say we have uh, 12 hours here, and we're breaking this into three parts. So one-third of 12 is the size, is the number of hours in one of those parts. All right, so we would have four hours here, we would have four hours here, and we'd have four hours here, so the total is 12 hours. And right here is the result of doing one-third of 12 hours. And that gives me a total of uh, four hours. If you insisted on creating a multiplicative structure here, in other words, putting units on all these things, then I think the best thing to say here would simply be do one-third copy of, there's 12 hours per copy. So we're, we're doing something called the unitizing, right? We're thinking of the 12 hours as, as one whole thing. That's one whole copy, and there's 12 hours in that one thing. So there's 12 hours per whole, and we're doing a, a third of the whole. But if you use these words, notice again we have copy here and copy here. Those cancel, or those uh, should be the same. And our final answer should be this. Oops, should be uh, in terms of this unit here, which is hours. And that gives us a total of uh, one third copy of twelve hours per copy gives me four hours. It's a third of a copy of a whole copy, and the whole copy is twelve hours. Now, most people will feel uncomfortable sort of forcing these units in here. I like to put the words copy and copy here. Felt like I was forcing that into play. But I, I want you to think that even when you're doing one third of some something, that you're, you still have the basic structure of multiplicand times multiplier. It's just that the unit on the multiplier, maybe you could say, is a copy. Okay, let's do uh, this one fifth of 17. And if you want, we could keep the same uh, kind of context, money, $17 made in five hours type of thing, or we can do something different. Let's do uh, the 17 brownies. I'm, I'm going to pick brownies, because brownies, can you can cut them up into pieces. I would not want to say something like this. You have 17 uh, gems shared with five kids. Because a gem is... is Hard. You can't break them up. You can't say, well, you give split that gem in half. You give me half, and I'll take the other half. So you, you kind of want to invent a context where it makes sense that it's feasible to break something up here, um, like, a, like a brownie. 
Right? You could do portions of a brownie pretty easily. So you have 17 brownies shared with five kids. Again, this is a partitive conceptualization because you're saying, okay, you have five kids, and you're saying how many brownies per kid are we looking for? Brownies per kid, and we want the total to be the 17 brownies. Okay, so we definitely have uh, a partitive conceptualization of the division here, 17 divided by 5, and that's what one-fifth of 17 means to do. And again, you could throw the word copy in here and say, hey, one-fifth of a copy of 17 brownies per copy. Okay, let's, let's make the brownies. We have 17 of them. That's quite a bit. And you could put them, stack them side by side. There's so many ways you could draw a picture of this. You can draw them all. You can, you know, pull them apart if you want, or you can put them side by side. Uh, but we're going to have 17 of these. I'm going to choose to put them. I'm having trouble here. Undo. Grab that. There we go. I'm going to put them side by side. And I think I'm going to have to shrink them down. Ooh, I don't know if there's a good way to do that. Let me just cut them in half and say those are those are uh, each brownie. So there's a there's two brownies. There's four, six brownies, eight brownies, uh, ten brownies, twelve brownies, fourteen brownies, sixteen brownies, and we need. Uh, one more of these little blocks here. All right, 17 brownies. I think that's right. And we want to share this with five kids. I'll use these buckets as, as kids. So many ways to do this, right? You could color code and say, okay, put put one brownie there, you know, put put the next brownie here, etc. And you can split up all the brownies that way. You can make, use dots for the brownies. The reason I don't like doing dots for the brownies is because we're going to have to do partial brownies at some point. Or you can say, okay, well, uh, what's the largest number of brownies I can just give to each kid and guarantee I'm going to have some brownies left over? And so if you do groups of three brownies per kid, Notice that leaves two brownies left over. So we could put, you know, a, a brownie, a brownie, and a brownie, and each kid gets that. So they get three whole brownies each at least. Now the question is, uh, how do I partition the the last two? How do we share those? And you could break each one up into five equal parts. It's challenging to do. This will be good enough. Let's keep our brownies distinct with longer vertical lines. And then I can take these strips and say, okay, well, uh, each kid gets two green pieces, right? Then each kid's going to get two of these. Then each kid's going to get these middle ones, etc. Color coding. Then each kid's going to get a blue one. And then finally, each kid's going to get a purple one or the white one. I could have left it white. So then we have uh, each one's going to get... Each kid's going to get... Uh, oh, color coding's by kid, sorry. One kid's going to get two purples. We're color coding by kid. One kid will get two purple strips. Let's just use that. Two purple strips... Uh, one kid's going to get uh, two green strips in no particular order. One kid's going to get, you know, two of those orange strips. One kid's going to get two of the uh, red ones. And the last kid will get the the two blue ones. So each, each little strip I've drawn here represents one-fifth of a brownie. And so the answer is each kid gets uh, three and two-fifths brownies. 
But if you put this all in terms of fifths, right, there's five fifths, 10 fifths, 15 fifths, 17 fifths brownies is what each person gets. 17 fifths brownies. Another way to, to realize that that would be the case is, what if you did this, this color coding thing for all the brownies? Right, you cut all 17 brownies into fifths and then gave each person uh, a fifth of each of the seven brownies. So you would have 17 one-fifths that each kid would get. But anyway, each kid gets uh, 17 fifths brownies. I wanted to point out something that uh, maybe is starting to feel... Um, now you already know, obviously, but if I do one third of 12, then it turns out that I can just do 12 thirds, and the answer is four. 12 thirds makes four. Notice that answers the question. Here, when I do one fifth of 17, the answer is 17 fifths, which is a valid answer to write this, or you can convert that to three and two fifths as a mixed number. So you're starting to be, get to the point where you can generalize that if you do a unit fraction times a whole number, the answer is just going to be uh, that whole number over that denominator. And students will be able to get to the point where if they ever see something like 1 over a times b, the answer is just b eighths, something like this. And that's when they start using that a lot more, say, in an, in an algebra class. But these ideas here are the foundation for forming that understanding. Number five, let's consider a non-unit fraction as a multiplier. Okay, so when you have a non-unit fraction as a multiplier, we read this as a beefs copies of c. And I should have put the word uh, of right there. A beef copies of c. Or you can simply say a beef of c. So if this was two-thirds times five, I would say two-thirds of five, or two-thirds times five, or two-thirds copies of five. Uh, a beefs times C is interpreted as A copies of one beef of C. In other words, when you see A beefs of C, it's a good way to think of it this way. It's A copies, or A times, one beef of C. So we've already talked about how to do one beef of C, you just divide C into B equal parts, and then you do A copies of that. What this implies is that when you want to calculate A beefs of C, this requires partitioning C into equal portions and then iterating one of those portions. It's, an, it's a partitioning followed by an iterating. It's a dual operation process just to do a, a fraction multiplier that's not a unit fraction. In the case of a unit fraction up here, when I say do one b times a, it just means you do the single operation of a divided by b partitively. You just partition a into b equal parts and you're done. The size of one part is the answer. But here, we're gonna, and it's a two-step process. You're first gonna do right here, where you do partition c into b equal parts and focus on one part, and then you do an iterating, do a copies of that. All right, so we're going to invent a word problem where we want to do something like this. Now that we have a non-whole multiplier, it's good to be thinking of things that it's easy to do partial copies of. Kids, like we did up here, was not a good is not a good thing to use. Because what does it mean to have, <clears throat> sorry, two and a half kids, and how many brownies per kid? You're like, wait, two and a half kids. What does that mean? All right. So when you want to use a non-whole multiplier, then it's you want to have a unit here that makes sense that it's not a whole number. So kids is not a good route to go here. But ours was. So let, maybe let's do a, a money situation again, where we have uh, five thirds hours times $12 per hour. And so the question is how many you know, dollars? How much money do we make? So this would be a, a good use of uh, doing 5 thirds times 12. 5 thirds hours times $12 per hour. Where 5 thirds, we insist, is the multiplier. 
right? That's different than saying, hey, I worked for 12 hours and I made this much money per hour, but then you're switching the role. You're saying 12 is the multiplier when you do that. So we're insisting that this is the time, this is the dollar per time. 5 thirds hours times 12 hours. Okay, so this is a two-step process. We're first going to take $12, which is corresponds to one hour. Give me a rectangle, please. There we go. Okay. All right, so this is uh, $12, if you're doing it in terms of dollars, or you can think of it as one hour. Okay. It represents an hour or it represents $12. So now I'm going to uh, break this apart, and I'm going to coordinate dollars and hours. I want to do uh, partitioning first, right? Because when you see 5 thirds times 12, you want to think it's 5 copies of 1 third of 12. So we're going to partition 12 into 3 equal pieces, and then we'll do 5 copies of that share. So breaking this into 3 equal pieces, uh, let's make that look, no, that doesn't look right already. This doesn't have to be perfect, but you get the idea. They should look roughly the same. Okay, so here is, uh, this is one third of an hour, or four dollars. Right, so we're coordinating the size of that piece. Now I want to do five copies of that. So now I'm going to do some shading, which means we're going to extend beyond, we're going to create a new rectangle. Copy it. Uh oh, I hope you did not freeze on me. Oh boy, I'm going to have to exit. And hopefully this will, should come right back. Fingers crossed, I would not want to redo all this stuff. Okay, here we are. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. Copy it, not delete it. Copy, paste. Okay, so here's a, a second hour to work with. Or a second group of $12. And I want to copy this mount All right, right here. Let's do some shading. I want to do five iterations of that. So there's two, three, four, five. So we have to do partition this one as well into thirds. And we have a result then. Five times four is 20, so we have $20 here, or we have five thirds hours. So five thirds hours times $12 per hour gives us $20 total. The, the gist of it is when you do a fraction times a whole number, really a fraction times anything, is you want to partition the multiplicand into three equal parts and then do five iterations of that, and that is how you get your new amount. See, this is a good example of why you don't want to think repeated addition. Like, 5 times 12, you could say, hey, add 12 five times. 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. But 5 thirds times 12 is like, hey, add 12 five thirds times. That's confusing to a lot of people to say that. You don't like the repeated addition. Instead, when you see a fraction times a number, where the fraction is the multiplier, then think of it as a two-step process. Partition into three equal groups, and then do five copies of that. Partitioning followed by iterating. So make it smaller, and then expand. Shrink and expand type of idea, right? So I started with the green amount, I shrunk it down to this orange amount, and then I expanded that back into the answer. Uh, three-fourths times 11. Okay, so let's do this again. Uh, I'm going to be able to copy, well, I'll just make a new picture. Three-fourths times 11. I do want to point out uh, an, 
a realization you might make here too that if you do 12 times 5, you get 60 divided by 3 is 20. Uh, that takes some of the meaning out of what we just did here in our picture, but it's going to turn out to be true that numerically, if you have a fraction times a non-fraction, that you could just multiply the numerator and the non-fraction and put that over the original denominator. That's something you're already familiar with doing. Um, Well, I leave that to you to see if you can generalize this process and understand why that's going to be the case. Let's do 3 fourths times 11. So we start with 11. Oh, we need a context. Uh, something where uh, we can do partial amounts. 3 fourths. How about we do, like, I don't know, you go 3 fourths of a mile. Let's do this, yeah. 3 fourths of a mile, and it normally takes you 11 minutes to run a mile, 11 minutes per mile. This will tell you how long it took to go 3 quarters of a mile. These problems are pretty easy to set up. You can really think of any unit you want to put right here, as long as it's something that a, a fractional amount or non-whole amount makes sense, so not a kid, but a mile. And then just make sure that same unit's down here, and then think of some sort of relationship to some other unit right here, and then your answer is going to be in terms of that new unit. So if you go 3 quarter miles times 11 miles per minutes per mile, it will give me how many minutes it takes. So here's my context. I'm leaving off the question I should write. You know, I write a sentence, how many minutes does it take to go three-fourths of a mile if it takes you 11 miles per minute? 11 minutes per mile, I should say. 11 miles, minutes per mile. And uh, visually, we start with 11. So we'll say this is 11. Uh, this is our initial amount. It's 11 minutes, or it's the same thing as one mile. Let's go with the green. So I'll kind of mimic the structure we have up there. So this is either uh, 11 minutes, or you can think of it as one mile. And we're going to partition that 11 into four equal parts first, and then iterate three of them. So let's break this into four equal pieces. So right down the middle, and then each of these down the middle. And here we have either, this is 11 fourths of a so you take 11 divided by 4, and that's 11 fourths. We talked about that in the last unit. So we have 11 fourths of a uh, minute, or you can say this is one quarter of a mile, each of these pieces. It's a quarter of a mile, which corresponds to 11 quarters of a minute. Uh, and then we want to iterate that three times. One, two, three. Now let's go ahead and shade that in, or let's shade in just the one. And this is we first shrunk down to this size from the eleven mile for eleven minutes. We shrunk it down to eleven quarters minutes, and now we're going to expand to by doing three copies of that. So three copies of that will be a total of, uh, we do three eleven fourths. That's thirty three fourths. Uh, and this is minutes, as long as how long that takes. Or you can convert this to a mixed number. Thirty three four goes into thirty three uh, eight times with a one left over, so we have eight and a quarter minutes. Or you can think of this as three quarters of a mile. So we are coordinating uh, multiple units here when I did these fraction bars. And our final answer here is 8 and a quarter or 33 quarters minutes. But again, the emphasis, whenever you do a fraction times a, a multiplicand, two-step process. You take the multiplicand and partition it into four equal pieces, 
focus on that size now as a new as a new unit and iterate that new unit three times and you get uh, the total amount that you're after. Okay, and finally, let's say that we've got some mixed numbers in play. The tasks below involve mixed numbers. Express each, each question as a mixed missing product multiplication task with the first factor as the multiplier, then resolve each task in two ways using a drawing to represent your reasoning for each method. I may, for time's sake, skip the drawings, but let's say we have we work four and five, six hours each day for three days. So when you see this hours each day, that's that's the rate. That's the multiplicand. And it's a mixed number. So it's four and five, six hours per day. That's the multiplicand. And then we did it for three days. So that's the multiplier. And we have created a missing product multiplication task. And the answer will be in terms of hours. <clears throat> so really, I just got to copy four and five, six, three times. So do three copies of four and five, six. OK, one way to do this is to leave it as four and five, six. It really boils down to doing three times four plus five, six and uh, distributing the three, use a distributive property, right? Because if you have four somethings, and then you have only, you know, five, six, so there's four and five, six, and then you copy that three times. Well, you can just copy the four three times, and then copy that three times, and then put it all back together. All right, so you got the distributive property uh, applies here. So we do three copies of four, that's 12, and then we do three copies of five, six. And we've discussed earlier today that three copies of five six makes fifteen sixths. So we have twelve plus fifteen sixths. And if I want to get this, I could uh, reduce fifteen sixths to more simple terms. Divide each by three. That's the same thing as doing twelve plus five halves, and then get a common denominator. Let's take our work up here. We have twenty four halves is the same thing as twelve, and add to that five halves, and now we have an answer of twenty nine halves, which you could write as a mixed number again. Uh, 28 halves is 14, so this is 14 and one extra half. And this is how many hours? 14 and a half hours is how much you worked. This is one approach, and I'll leave the picture off. And feel free to do the same in your notes, but in your homework, follow the instructions. Uh, now, a second way to do this one is to do uh, convert this mixed number into a improper fraction. So we have 3 times 4 and 5 6. So I'm going to think of that, leave the 3 out, don't do that yet. Think of the 4 as 24 sixths and add that to 5 6. That gives me a total of 29 sixths. And then we do 3 29s. And 3 times 29 is going to be 87. Six. 87 six. Now the question is, do is there a more simple way to express this answer? Well, the only factors of six are two and three, but two does not divide into 87 because seven's not um, even. Does three divide into 87? Well, eight plus seven is 15 and three divides into that. So yes, it does. We can divide each of these top and bottom by three and that gives me a total of 29 halves. Right, we get the same answer we expected to answer, and this is measured in hours. Or you can say, of course, 14 and a half hours. So that's your, your basic two ways when you're working with a whole multiplier, but a mixed number multiplicand. You can distribute, or you can convert the mixed number into an improper fraction and then do the multiplication. Uh, now here you worked for two and a, five, six hours, and you got paid $8 per hour. Notice the $8 per hour. That's the multiplicand. That's when you see that per, that's helping us identify that we have $8 per hour. And the multiplier is the 2 and 5, 6. So 2 and 5, 6 hours. And our answer is going to be in uh, dollars, right? How many dollars did we make? This one was before the, uh, the mixed number was the multiplicand, now the mixed number is the multiplier. Okay, 
So that's why these problems are a little bit different. The mixed numbers wound up in a different location. Again, you have multiple ways to do this. If you did two and five, six hours and you got $8 every hour, then you could do a distributive property first. Distributive property works from the right side as well. So we can say this is two times eight. So you got, you got $16 essentially for the first two hours, but now we have to do five, six of eight to figure out how much money you made for the partial hour. Move this stuff up. And we're going to partition eight into six pieces. So we have eight sixths, and then we do five copies of that. So that gives us 40 sixths. If I was doing a visual, right, I would draw, I would say, hey, there's eight. Uh, this is eight dollars or one hour. Now I'd break it up into six equal pieces and figure out how much is in one of those pieces, how many dollars are in one piece and then do five of those pieces. All right, I'm, I'm gonna leave the image off, but it's this partitioning followed by uh, iterating. And so we have $16 uh, dollars plus, uh, we do five times one sixth of eight instead. That's what five sixths of eight means. One sixth of eight, can, you get eight sixths. So we have 16 plus five times eight sixths. And then five copies of eight sixths is 40 sixths. We have 16 plus 46. 46, uh, you can divide each of those by 2. So that's the same thing as 20 thirds. And then get a common denominator. 48 thirds plus 20 more thirds gives us a total of 68 thirds. Is 68 div divisible by 3? The answer is no, because 6 plus 8 is 14, and that's not divisible by 3. Uh, get a common, or get, convert this to a mixed number, if you will. Uh, 3 times 21 is 63. 3 times 22 is 66. That's going to do it. So 22 and 2 thirds. And the unit here is dollars. Oops. Go. All right, so that's how much money you made when you worked 2 and 5, 6 hours at $8 per hour. Notice it's less than three hours, so your final answer should be less than $24, which it is, right? 22 and two-thirds. Let me shrink this down a little bit and then show you the other way to do this, and we'll call this lecture done. Oops. I need you to stay shrunken, please. Thank you. Okay, another approach is to, uh, similar to what we did above, is to combine the multiplier into a single fraction. Right, so we have this 2 plus 5, 6 times 8 is what we're doing. So 2 and 5, 6 hours, well, that's the same thing as 12, 6 hours plus 5, 6 hours times $8 per hour. That's going to give us 17, 6 hours times $8 per hour. And then we do the partitioning first. So if I were to force a step in here, so we would have 17 times 8 sixths. If you want, you can simplify that now. It's a probably a good idea. That's 4 thirds. And then 17 times 17 copies of 4 thirds is 17 times 4. That is our 68 thirds. All right, so we get the same answer, uh, 22 and 2 thirds dollars. Okay, and that wraps up uh, our week two lecture. Week two, that is, this is week 11, but week two on our unit of uh, fractions and operations. I intend to have four total uh, lectures.